What about the product mix? Uh, will the popularity of SUVs and large vehicles uh, uh, still be the standard? Obviously, we're in the heyday of that right now. I mean, uh, cars aren't selling anything that says crossover an SUV. You know, they're selling like gangbusters. But again, a cyclical business, if, I mean, no one can predict uh, an, up, an international upheaval in the markets, in energy supplies, um, you know, but I will say this, I think GM and Ford both are better positioned to dial up their small cars as they need be and dial back their SUVs and trucks as, they, as, as is needed to weather the coming storm. But as far as how long this, this SUV crossover binge is going to continue, maybe the trucks might slow a little bit, but you know, people like crossovers for any number of reasons. Uh, one in particular, aging population. They find it easier to get in and out of crossovers. That's not talk, talked about much. But it's not just, and in focus groups that have been going on, I mean, 15 years now, women have been saying, I like to sit up a little higher in the vehicle. I like the command driving position. So you combine that with an aging population that likes to sort of step in and step out rather than drop in and crawl out of a car. The crossover thing's probably going to continue for a long time. Does it mean the end of passenger cars? No. Does it mean the end of luxury sports cars or anything like that? No. But uh, I think it's going to be a steady stream from here out. It might not be the, the red hot level, peak level we are now, but it's going to be there for the foreseeable future. Uh, what about technology? Uh, who's kind of leading the way in that area? Well, the biggest issue right now for especially Ford and GM and to a lesser degree FCA is the attracting talent and keeping talent. Um, <clears throat> there is a talent drain right now exiting the city for the greener pastures of Silicon Valley and the promise of bunny rabbits and rainbows out there or whatever they're saying besides throwing huge amounts of money. But they've got Faraday Future, they've got Tesla, they've got a few other companies that think they're going to flip a switch and be a players in the auto business overnight. It doesn't usually work that way, but Detroit is fighting this uh, talent drain right now. Um, they are positioning themselves as, you know, right now the buzz for the auto companies is it's a mindset. They don't want to be perceived as old Detroit. They don't want to be left at the station with the train running off into Autonomousville or whatever, car sharing. So they're kind of going around right now making deals like drunken sailors on, on, on digital companies and tech companies. You know, uh, one week they want to be a mobility company, the next week they want to be a technology company. Uh, as long as it has a Y at the end, they're, they're good with it. But um, they're still auto companies. That's still their bread and butter. Um, but this move into car ride sharing, autonomous vehicles, fi they find themselves battling for talent with Silicon Valley. And it's a rough go. And some people have defected uh, from Detroit. And, and of course, some of those have come back already. But um, that's an issue. Um, and this embracing of, this is a big deal. I mean, sort of culturally for Detroit. You know, we will never be perceived as old Detroit again. We are going to be out front of whatever the movement is in this business. And right now the buzz is autonomous cars and, you know, car sharing and that whole thing. So there have been a, a couple questionable deals made by, you know, GM in particular, trying to, you know, just, well, I'm going to write a check for this company and that's going to solve, you know, that problem. It doesn't usually work that way.